Page 11, the song that never ends. This is a dangerous song. We'll talk about it. Now, on the previous pages, they're giving you sight reading things and uh, other little exercises to do. I don't cover those in the videos. If you have questions about them, you're welcome to ask. Sight reading is something where you just sit down and you're trying to play it without practicing it. You're just playing it at sight. You're just playing at sight. It's a good skill to have and it takes practice. So all the sight reading you can do, by all means, do it. Yeah. Just keep in mind that when you're sight reading, the music you're sight reading is going to be a lot easier than the music you're actually playing. So you're at one level, your sight reading is going to be at a much easier level. Keep it that. Don't try and sight read at the level you're at. I mean, I'll talk more about that in the future because some teachers teach that too. But no, let's keep the sight reading simple. So if you look at, on pages 8 and 9, you'll see that the sight reading it, that's pretty simple compared to what the music you're studying. That's important. Anyway, let's talk about this song that never ends. It drives people crazy. 4-4 four, four time. We're using the white keys. We have some sharps in here, so we got to watch out on that. One hand at a time. Let's make sure we get the fingering and all that worked out. Your right hand, you're here, which is going to put your hand in this position. Again, you don't need any of these other finger numbers for the right hand. You just need to know where to start because you're not moving around. That's what sometimes you're going to have to play a B with with the right hand, but that's not really moving the hand. You're just moving one finger. That's okay. So at the beginning, it's one and two and so F sharp, F natural, right off the bat. One and two and three and four and one and two. It's the same kind of rhythm we had before, isn't it? Measure three. One and two. It's the same as first line, isn't it? Third line down, measure five. One. Then you just, just bring that, bring that, leave the thumb where it is, and bring the hand up here and go. So all I did is I changed here. That's all. And then for measure seven, I'm back to where I was. One and. And then finally the thumb comes down. So I did spread out a little bit here. Hmm, that's kind of fun. Left hand just has the primary chord. C chord. And then the G7 chord. A major six. You gotta come up here, just reach up. Actually, what we're gonna do is move the hand up here. And you have rest, you got time to move the hand up. Seven during the rest, you come back down. Put the hands together. One and two and three and four and one and two. Now make sure these notes in the left hand are quarter notes. One and two, they come up on beat two. One and two. So it's measure three, one and two. You put the hands together and then go back through and get rid of the hesitations. Now we'll add in the articulation. Well, we have staccatos and slurs. And the staccato, I'm going to hinge at the wrist. Here's short staccato. I'm on the keys and I'm just bouncing off. Each time. Don't start above the keys and hit it. Be on the key and just play it and bounce off real quick. And then the right hand is connected. Third line, measure five, it's here. Now at, the at the end, the last measure, in the left hand, you're going to repeat back to the beginning. That's what the repeats is for. But go ahead and connect it if you can. Here. If you can't, you have to lift up. But, uh, if you can. Otherwise, you, you got to do that. Okay, well, eventually you want to be able to have the control to connect it. This and this. To connect it. Should do it in both hands. Where's C? It's good practice. 
As far as the dynamic goes, they give you one here, and that's MF at the beginning. Mezzo forte, moderately loud, medium loud, sort of loud. It's going to be both hands. Because you're playing staccatos in the left hand, it's fine. Otherwise, I'd say make it the right hand because that's the melody. Speed, lightly swinging. Oh, goody. Doesn't really tell you how fast to go, but it's telling you to swing the notes. What swinging the notes is where it's eighth notes only. We only swing eighth notes, and it's where the counting changes. You're not counting straight eighth notes, one and two and three and. You're just going to swing the counting. Long, short. One and two and three, and it's felt. There's no notation for it. You feel it. And you play it then as you feel it. One and two and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. One and two and three and four and. Like that. That's it. As far as how fast you go, well, you can't go real fast when you're swinging because then the short note gets too short and it messes it up. You can't go too slow because then it drags and we don't swing really slow. We, we even it up. So it's got to be somewhere in the middle. As far as singing goes, that's up to you. I don't forget that. Now the hard part. Normally when you repeat things, you only repeat it one time unless there's a note telling you to repeat or play so many times and that's tricky because if it says repeat twice that means you're going to play it three times because you played it once before you repeat but if it says play twice which it doesn't need to that means you're going to repeat once because you play it once and then you repeat it and that's the second time so some instructions will tell you how many times to repeat and some instructions tell you how many times to play it Watch out, they're not the same. This says repeat indefinitely, never stop. And that's why it's so dangerous, because after you've played this four or five times, somebody's going to come in if they can hear you and strangle you, because it gets really old playing the same thing over and over and over. You want to drive them nuts? Do that. Yeah, it'll work. Yeah. As far as this lesson goes, we're going to do what they suggest at the bottom, and that is we're going to repeat once. And I'm, since I'm not doing the words, see if you're going to do the words, you got to do the whole thing at least twice. And that means you repeat again, but I'm only going to do like the first four majors and I'm just going to fade out. So in other words, the song never ends. You just fade out. I don't know. It's something like that. So you have to play the whole thing twice and then you repeat again and you fade out. Like that. Yeah. Again, don't copy me. You make it yours. You do your own thing with it. But that's when we do the play with me, I'm going to play the whole thing twice, and then I'm going to play the first two lines again, and then I'm going to. I'm actually going to play the first chord in measure five to end it off. I need to end on a one chord, and that'll be it. Actually, let's do the play with me now. Does this just checking notes and rhythms? So go ahead and learn it first. Get it where you no hesitations or nothing. It will take it nice and slow. As I said, we're going to play it twice, and then we're going to go back and play the first two lines again. Yeah. And one chord. So it's like a measure four. It's here. And then I'm just going to play the first chord in measure five, and that's it. And we're done. One and two, and ready and go. And one and two, and three and four, and one.
end it. Right there. We're done.